Good morning, all. So yesterday we were discussing pumping lemma. So the basic idea of pumping lemma is that it is nothing but it is defining a characteristic feature of regular languages. So like I said, I compared it with rational numbers and irrational numbers. Um, rational. Finite, or if it is infinite, there has to be some repeating portion. Otherwise, it is not a regular language. Okay. Now, this repeating portion can be captured in a finite automaton through some cycle. If there is no cycle in a finite automaton, then you cannot have a repeating portion. Okay. Um, so, pumping lemma, what does it say? It basically says that if you take a string of sufficiently longer length whatever uh, that length is for instance uh, you can take whatever arbitrary length you want it can be 1 million 1 billion 1 trillion whatever it is the string can go even beyond this it can be 1 million 1 billion 1 trillion even 1 zillion if there is an upper limit on the length of the string then that language, total language has to be finite, right? Suppose it's, it's like if I say how many uh, maximum uh, four digit numbers you can have, maximum uh, 10,000 up to 9,999, right? How many maximum 1 billion numbers you can have up to some number? How many maximum uh, 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 1 trillion digit numbers you can have? Again, that will be some number, no matter how big it is. OK, for something to be regular languages, they should be captured with finite states. While being captured with finite states, for you to be able to generate arbitrarily long strings, the only way is you should have some cycle, some portion which is repeating. OK, so that is what pumping lemma says. In short, and another thing I mentioned, pumping lemma is mainly useful in negative proofs, that is to prove that a language something similar to like um, any universal law say if you take like gravity now how do you prove gravity there is no way of proving it okay but there can be a way of disproving it all right so if you find some instance of uh, maybe a pair of objects which are not um, attracting each other uh, directly proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to their distance to the square of their distance then that is a counter example to gravity right maybe then you will say okay you see gravity is not working in this case so maybe the law of gravity is wrong so you will so any universal law not only gravitational law any universal law you cannot prove it because for you to actually prove that law it will take infinite effort because say if i have to prove f equal to g m m to by r squared the only way is i have to take every possible pair of masses at every possible distance at every possible point of space, at every possible point of time, and show that each of these pairs of objects follows the law of gravity. But that is infinite pairs of objects. And uh, it is impossible to cover all the infinite cases. Right? So you cannot prove any universal law. Any universal law is a hypothesis. But still, we use them because we don't really find counterexamples to them. Even if we find, we don't immediately discard them. We will discard them only when we reach a point that we find so many counterexamples that we can no longer uphold this universal law. Okay, that is how science works. That is how even human mind works. Similarly, pumping lemma, although it is true for regular languages, it cannot be used to prove that a particular language is regular because if you have to prove that, you have to take every possible string in that language and show that pumping lemma, this satisfies pumping lemma. That is impossible. You have to take infinite strings. That's impossible. But to disprove a language is regular, 
that is easier you take at least one string and show that this does not satisfy pumping lemma and hence the language is non regular okay so pumping lemma exists but its use is more in negative proofs rather than positive proofs okay all right um so like this example like a b b star a now this is the cycle this cycle you can traverse this cycle any number of times there is no upper limit on the number of times you can traverse this cycle because of which you will get arbitrarily long strings you can get a string of length uh, 1 million 1 billion 1 trillion and even above that there is no upper limit on the length of the string that is the reason why this language has infinite strings but if you put a limit either on the number of times you can traverse this cycle or on the entire string length then your language will be finite then you don't even need pumping lemma any finite language will be a regular language that's it a simple way is even if you don't find any pattern in the strings a simple way to consider it as a regular language is you take each string do a union of that with every other string and that will be your regular expression that's it and since you can represent it using a regular expression that's a regular language right or you can always build a, an nfa which accepts one string at a time that's it so any finite language is a regular language the question comes when it is infinite when it is infinite the question comes can it be captured in finite states or can it not be captured in finite states if it can be captured in finite states the only way is there will be some repeating portion in the string which means there is a cycle in the finite automaton that's all so this so called cycle the strings which are part of this cycle the symbols which are part of this cycle they can be pumped up or down so if you pump up you will get longer strings with more repeating portions if you pump down you will get non repeating portion of the string even that string should be accepted like in this case even a will be accepted not only a b b a and a b b multiples and then a even when you pump up when you completely remove even that should be accepted that is what pumping lemma says okay so now let's look at the theorem so although this is called pumping lemma it is not actually lemma it's a theorem but its name is pumping lemma that's all okay if a is a regular language then there is a number p that is the pumping length where where if s is any string in a of length at least p then s into three pieces that is s equal to x y z satisfying the following conditions so 
so you should satisfy three conditions the first one is for each i greater than or equal to 0 x y power i z belongs to a the second one is mod y greater than 0 and the third one is mod x y less than or equal to p okay so let's um, say assume s equal to x y z so in this case i is 1 because it's y power 1 right if i make i to be 0 then s will be not s the resultant string will be xz so you are pumping down y okay now if you pump y up this will be x y y z again if you pump it up again it will be x triple y z and so on okay now all these strings not only s the first string you started with even after you modify the string by pumping y up or pumping it down all those strings should also belong to a then that is said to be a regular language okay should also belong to a okay so um, I'll come to the example later. The second condition is mod y greater than zero. Basically, what it is saying is the repeatable portion of the string that should be non-empty. If it is empty, then the statement is trivially true. It is anyway a finite string and it is anyway regular language. Okay, but only when the repeatable portion is non-empty, that is when you can get arbitrarily long strings, right? Without any upper limit. Okay, so the second condition is also important. See, basically pumping lemma is necessary only when your language is infinite, only when you have infinite number of strings. When you have finite number of strings, there is no need of pumping lemma. Okay. And the third condition is the repeatable portion should come within the pumping length. Okay. So we will see an example later, but third condition is mostly useful for some particular kind of uh, proofs, some particular kind of languages. So even if you don't understand it, it's okay. If you understand the first two conditions right now, it is sufficient. All right. So let's take one of the earlier examples. So let's take uh, this particular language L2. Now, Suppose S equal to say ABA. Now I can divide it in various ways. Let me divide it in the proper way to begin with. So I consider A as my X and BA as my Y and whatever is there on the right as my Z. In this case, there is nothing. So Epsilon will be my Z. Okay, and another thing, if you notice the second condition, the second condition is only speaking of Y. It's not speaking of X or Z. X or Z may be empty, may not be empty, does not matter. But Y should not be empty. The repeatable part should not be empty. The left part or right part can be empty or need not be empty. Okay, so uh, so if you have even only the repeatable part, like something like say BB whole star, even that is a regular language. You repeat it any number of times, you will get arbitrarily long strings. Okay, X and Z may be empty. So if this is my S, all right, now I can pump up Y or pump down Y. The resultant strings should also be in the language. Okay, so let me take different cases of I and uh, check how the expression and the string are changing. So if I is zero, the expression will be X, Y power zero, Z. So what will be the string? just a okay if i is 1 it is x 
y power 1 z it will be string will be a b a and if i is 2 it will be x y square z string will be a b a b a let's look at one more it will be x y cube z a b a b a and b a all right so this can go on like this so all these strings do they belong to l2 yes right okay so uh, but this is not a proof that this is a regular language okay because this is a regular language this is being satisfied that's all both are not the same thing this is only for you to understand the conditions i am not proving that this is a regular language i am just explaining you what the conditions are nothing more okay now let's try to divide let's try take a slightly different s and um, now let's try to divide it in a slightly different way so let me consider this ab as my x this a as my y and the rest of the string as my z now if i pump up y or pump down y will the resultant strings be part of l2 Hmm? No, right? Because you should repeat B A any number of times, not A any number of times. So does this mean this is a non-regular language? No. Why? Because I have just showed that there is one string uh, which does not satisfy pumping lemma in this language. Sorry. it is regular we know that there is no doubt about that but through this route i am showing that this is non regular right right so can i divide it in such a way that it satisfies pumping lemma yeah so i, I hope you understood our answer we should just show that there should be at least one way of dividing the string such that it satisfies pumping lemma not every way of dividing the string should satisfy pumping lemma in this case this particular way of dividing will not satisfy but there is another way of dividing it which will satisfy pumping lemma okay so if every string in the language has at least one way of dividing it such that it satisfies pumping lemma that is a regular language okay but if there is at least one string in the language when no matter how you try to divide it it will not satisfy pumping lemma even if it does not satisfy one condition of pumping lemma it will not satisfy pumping lemma if there is at least one such string in the language which does not satisfy pumping lemma then that is a non regular language no matter how you try to divide it it will not satisfy pumping lemma we will look at an example later okay so in this case this particular division will not work so let's divide it in a slightly different way all that i need to do is i should take some repeatable portion okay so i can uh, say consider this as my y okay and um, i can consider this as my x and this as my z now if i pump up or down this y will this work this will work right i can also take this as my y if and down okay so there are other ways of dividing a string at least if one way satisfies that's good enough all right so this will work okay 
all right so now let's get into the proof idea like how to prove the theorem let m be a phi tuple q sigma delta q and f be a dfa that recognizes a we assign the pumping length p to the number of states of m we show that any string s in l of length at least p maybe broken into three pieces x y z satisfying the three conditions of pumping lemma if s is in l and has length at least p consider the sequence of states that m goes through when computing with input s if n is the length of the string s the sequence of states r1 r2 up to rm has length n plus 
this i think is clear to you like if you remember omega if it has n symbols then you need minimum n plus 1 states to read all the symbols right you start with r not r1 up to rn similarly if you have uh, n symbols in s you will need to go through n plus 1 states okay because n is at least p we know that n plus 1 is greater than p the number of states in m thus the sequence must contain a repeated state by pigeon hole principle okay so basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to prove that there is a cycle in the finite automaton cycle is nothing but one or more states being revisited right so how are we proving that there is a cycle in the finite automaton we are saying that the length of s is at least p length of s is n n is at least p but to read these n input symbols you need at least n plus 1 states which means you need at least p plus 1 states which means you need to revisit at least one state which means there is a cycle okay that's the simple idea of the proof and once yeah so what i'm saying is the length of s is n and it is said that n is at least p okay so to read a string of length n you need at least n plus 1 states which means you need at least p plus 1 states but the number of states in m are p okay but still if you need p plus 1 states it means at least one of the states is being repeated that is what pigeon hole principle says right so if at least one of the states is being repeated there should be a cycle yes that's the first statement let's assume m has p states the pumping length to be the number of states so at least one of the states is being revisited which means there is a cycle okay so if there is a cycle then you can go to arbitrary length so let me uh, it will be more clear to you if i take an example okay so now if you consider this so in this machine there are 13 states okay so my p is 13 okay now let's assume s length is n but it is more than 13 it can be 14 15 100 1000 whatever it is it does not matter but since its length is minimum 13 you need to visit at least 14 states to read these 13 characters while reading this 13 characters you will be visiting minimum 14 states okay which means at least one of the states you will revisit the only way is you will have a cycle so let's assume this q9 this has a cycle there may be other states involved with q9 okay 
so this portion is the repeatable portion of the string the portion before that will be x and the portion after that will be z okay so if you see here say q9 is repeated it is coming twice while reading s4 and s5 s is made up of n characters while reading s4 character and s5 character you are going from q9 to q17 and again back to q9 okay Note this cycle that is equivalent to pumping down the string. That's it. All of these strings will be accepted by the language, by the machine, and you can get arbitrarily long strings based on the number of times you can traverse this cycle. Okay. So uh, we don't have much time, so I will not uh, get into the details of the proof. You refer to the textbook for the proof. Okay, let's look at an example now of how we can use pumping lemma. Like I said, basically we can use it to prove that a language is non-regular, right? So let's do exactly that. So let's consider the regular, I mean, regular example of a non-regular language that is zero power n, one power n. We know that this is a non-regular language. Now let's show that using pumping lemma. So how do we show that? you should take at least one string any one string in the language and show that no matter how you try to divide it it will not satisfy pumping lemma if it does not satisfy even one condition of pumping lemma it will not satisfy pumping lemma so you just need to show for one string all ways of dividing will fail at least one condition of pumping lemma that will show that the entire language is non regular okay so let so we will take a special string that is say 0 power p 1 power p okay which means this string is sufficiently longer it is at least longer than p all right and uh, we need to divide this string into three parts x y z but to prove that this is non regular language you don't start like that you try to start with the intention to prove that it is a regular language so you try to divide it in such a way that it satisfies the pumping lemma conditions but you will see that no matter how you try to divide it you cannot achieve that you will fail in your attempt okay so there are basically three possible ways of dividing the string that is say y has only zeros okay or the second way is y has only ones and what is the third way y has both zeros and ones is there a fourth way is there any other way of dividing it no y cannot be empty obviously so that is completely out of question if y is non empty then these are the three ways of dividing it is there a fourth way no right that's it so y either comes in the first half or it comes in the second half 
or it comes exactly at the middle. These are the only three ways in which you can divide the string. Now we will show that none of these ways can satisfy the pumping lemma. Why? Now suppose it has only zeros. Now if I pump y up, I will get x, y, y, z. What will happen if I pump y up? Number of zeros will be more than number of ones. So that is violating the pattern of the strings, right? So it means uh, number of zeros is greater than number of ones. Okay. So this. does not belong to A. Same thing with the second case also. In this case, number of ones will be more than number of zeros. Again, same issue. Okay. What about the third case? It won't satisfy. It will disturb the order. All right. Here, all zeros should be done, and only then ones should start. You should not get zeros in zeros after ones. Okay. But if suppose I take the string zero zero one one, and suppose this is my y. Now, if I pump this portion up, what will I get? Zero, zero one. 0, 1, and 1. So there is a 0 coming after 1. That is not allowed. So it is disturbing the order of 0s and 1s. So this also does not belong to the language. Okay? Okay, that's it. So no matter how you try to divide it, this string does not satisfy pumping lemma. So this language is not a regular language. Okay, it is not like we try to divide it in one particular way and show that this particular way does not satisfy. We try to divide it in every possible way. None of these ways are working. So this string does not satisfy pumping lemma. So this language is not a regular language. Okay, so that is the crux. So let me summarize it for you. So a regular language is one where for every string There is at least one way of dividing it such that It satisfies all the three conditions of the pumping lemma. And A non regular language is one where there is at least one string
no matter how you try to divide it it will fail one or more conditions of the pumping lemma so i worked out one example there are many more examples in the textbook so please refer to the textbook for more examples okay so with that we are done with the first chapter we will start the second chapter from the next class yeah yes because we have to show that every string will satisfy pumping lemma you see in a non regular language some strings may satisfy pump pumping lemma but some strings may not satisfy you just need to take one particular string and show that it does not satisfy so you need to choose the string intelligently okay